Hi, everyone. I'm Jason Perko with ZillaWorks. And at ZillaWorks, we've developed a new industrial bioplastic to reduce the carbon footprint for materials critical to a net zero future. Epoxy resins are a type of industrial plastic used everywhere. It's in our homes, where we work, where we learn. It's where we play. It's in the tools we use and how we get around and even in the energy we create. Unfortunately, the 4 million tons of epoxy resin we use globally each year have a heavy carbon footprint. Product manufacturers are being pressured to reduce their carbon footprint for a variety of reasons, from retailer requirements, regulations, and carbon markets. ZillaWorks uses plants to create a drop-in epoxy replacement for a number of different applications. We've identified clear steps to a 60% reduction in carbon footprint compared to petroleum-based epoxies, our patented process uses vegetable oils like hemp seed and linseed oil, and using specific formulations creates a high performance bio epoxy resin system that product manufacturers can adopt without any retooling. There are only a few companies that have been able to create a bio epoxy resin. However, Zilla's resin delivers better performance and four times the carbon footprint reduction. Zilla holds the global exclusive license to four issued and three pending patents. We're well positioned for new IP and we hold exact formulations as trade secret. Epoxy resin is an $8.5 billion global industry and growing. Our go-to-market strategy starts niche, then expands. The ski and snowboard industry are the ideal early adopters who can give us rapid feedback and help us demonstrate viability in demanding real world environments. That industry is quick to adopt new technologies, they have high margins, and they require high performance standards. This is our COO on skis made with our bioresin, testing in extreme conditions. These early adopters will help us scale to the mid-size market, specifically the floor coating industry. Serving those mid-size customers helps us to increase our production capacity to reach larger market segments, global manufacturers and sustainable energy production, and transportation. Zilla is targeting strategic customers with aggressive ESG goals. We're launching a paid pilot with Burton Snowboards this month. Burton will use our bioresin across several board lines over the winter to qualify our resin for full adoption. That will become about a $3 million annual contract. This month, we'll also be delivering samples and setting up paid pilots with 10 additional outdoor manufacturers. Patagonia is leading our floor coating efforts by exploring use of our bioresin on the floors of their retail stores. Vestas, the world's largest wind turbine manufacturer, consumes approximately 100,000 metric tons of epoxy resin annually, and they're actively seeking carbon reduction and end-of-life strategies for their wind turbines. Vestas recently selected ZillaWorks as a winner of their Call for Technology Challenge. And folks uh, in the automotive industry uh, we're in conversations with uh, because they're reaching out to us as they electrify their vehicles and need to use more composites for light weighting. Each of these markets require a specific formulation, which is why Zilla is, not, is more than just a bio-epoxy manufacturer. We're a custom formulator, providing the highest value add in the epoxy supply chain uh, so we can sell our resin system to our product partners as a drop-in solution. Our product margins are around 30%, depending upon the application. We've brought together an amazing leadership team. Jeff's 40 years of experience makes him one of the premier polymer formulators in the world. Evan is a world-class athlete and engineer who has taken ideas from napkin to full-scale production. Brad has experience in, experience in international finance and taxes. And Andy is a 17-year veteran in the outdoor space. We have multiple researchers advancing our technology in parallel under the guidance of the Zillow leadership team. The University of Alberta is currently formulating for floor coatings and the WSU team is formulating for wind turbines. We have a clear pathway to scale up and commercialize our bio epoxy resin platform technology. We'll be at revenue in less than a year and growing to over 40 million within four years. We're opening a seed extension round in January to raise $4 million. These funds will allow us to scale the 10 ton batch size complete additional pilots in the outdoor and floor coating space, and set up the team for commercialization with eight critical hires over the next year. ZillaWorks has raised $2 million to date, almost half in grants, and we have been recognized around the globe for our innovative technology that reduces the carbon footprint for materials critical to a net zero future. Thanks for your attention. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have.
Oh, great pitch, great timing, great everything. While I bring everyone in, when everything's great, there always seems to be something else. So what are we missing? What's the not great part? Or what's the hard part with with Zillow? What uh, What's the thing that you don't want me to ask about and why? Uh, you're welcome to ask about anything, but I'll be completely transparent. Um, so we've demonstrated the demand for our product across multiple verticals. Our biggest uh, roadblock is production capacity. Um, and we're uh, participating, wrapping up right now, the, the Heritage Group Accelerator Program out of Indianapolis. Uh, one of their portfolio companies is uh, Monument uh, Chemical, uh, who has four uh, pr- uh, chemical manufacturing facilities in the US, one in Belgium. They are helping us to scale to that 10 ton and then beyond uh, capacity. So, um, but that's, that's the biggest essentially uh, uh, roadblock to our endeavor. Uh, the biggest uh, risk uh, to the endeavor is scale up and bringing our cogs down. But we have a, a g- good partner in our corner now for that. I'm sorry, Very Matt, good. you're muted. I am yeah. muted. Sorry about that. Very good. We'll definitely have more questions about that. But first, sure. uh, Taz, do you want to kick things off? What questions do you have for Zillow Works? Great. Thank you, Matt. Um, and Jason, great presentation. I appreciate it. One of the Thank things you. that always con- concern me as we're talking about this transition is that we don't have, and yeah, I think you just touched on it, the cost factor, um, you know, for, from the alternatives that are out there, and, and it's interesting, we've seen something similar to this for the sports industry, so I might love that, um, but uh, are there ways, are there additional ways that you can think about where the cost can be reduced? Because I think that's been one of the things that we've been seeing a lot of lack of, uh, um, of, uh, of use has been for a lot of the corporate partners. Absolutely. In our conversations with Monument Chemical, um, we actually have a technical call lined up for this Thursday. They've reviewed our process documents in detail, and they believe they can you know, take our five-step reaction down to two steps. Um, so that will have a huge impact on COGS. We also have a proposal from Oregon State University to use microfluidics uh, to potentially you know, reduce our OPEX, CAPEX, and our carbon footprint. Again, that's very early stage R&D project. It's not the focus of what we're doing. We're trying to get product to market as quick as possible. But we are seeing from multiple entities that there are pathways for us to reduce our COGS as we scale to commercial volumes. Great. Thank you so much, Jason. Jason? Sure. Um, Yeah, great presentation. You know, some of the, I really like all the verticals they're after, um, going after, you know, in terms of kind of, they're all massive markets. You have a coding that seems to apply to a bunch of different verticals. And, you know, you mentioned focusing and starting in on the ski space. Um, what, I guess the challenge on that side is going to be, you know, compared to some of the other, like plastics that are recycled more often, or, you know, um, other sectors where it's something that's shorter term, shorter life cycle use. Um, what's the pitch or how have the conversations gone in terms of talking to ski suppliers, for example, and saying like, you need to really focus on your um, eco-friendly products now when we have the coding solution for you. Um, yeah, how have, how have those conversations gone for you? Uh in the outdoor space really well, because there's other entities like Protect Our Winters that have um, you know, raised awareness about climate change and the impacts on outdoor sports and our abilities to play in, in the outdoors, right? So um, okay. because of that and the consumer pressure to manufacturers um, and even retailer uh, pressures like REI, which is a big outdoor retailer in the United States, uh, they have product impact guidelines that's causing, it makes all of their manufacturers not only track, but have a plan to reduce their carbon efforts or their carbon emissions, right? So uh, in that outdoor space, those conversations have gone really well. There are, of course, leaders like, like Burton, right? That it has, has a long uh, history of sustainability. And then there's others that are just now starting to step in that space and start to map out their carbon footprint. So um, yeah, with each manufacturer, it's different, but they all are feeling the pressure to in that vertical to reduce their carbon footprint as quick as possible. Right. Okay. Um, and might be 
different in different verticals, but are you finding the best pathways in from the, um, you know, from the brands themselves, from their manufacturers that can then go to their brands and say, this is a new product we offer and new eco-friendly solution or, um, you know, what, which uh, inroads are going to be the most helpful for you? Yeah, for each vertical, it's different. That kind of um, that strategy for sales and, and marketing. Um, in the outdoor space, again, we have Andy Merriman, who uh, is a 17-year veteran. He's got he's been in every ski factory on the planet. He can you know say in one hand the number of ski factories has not been in. Um, and of course, being at Black Diamond that has 35 uh, product categories and 5,000 SKUs, his his relationships ex- extend beyond skis and snowboards to wakeboards, kiteboards, surfboards, um, kayak paddles, et cetera, right? So we're identifying right now the 10 additional product manufacturers we want to work with besides Burton that have the right values alignment and have those corporate sustainability goals. They're going to run much faster to full adoption, just like Burton is is doing, right? So in other verticals like uh, automotive, those folks have more of a three to five year timeline for adoption of biomaterials. So it's not, you know, the front end, again, it's a very large market, high volume, low margin, but it's not the front end of our roadmap. We want to get our production uh, capacity scaled up. Um, in, the, in the floor coating space, uh, there are um, certifications like LEED version four and uh, living building challenge, living product challenge. Even in Washington state where I'm from, uh, the governor is now tracking embodied carbon for all new government buildings, right? So there are regulatory and, and certifications, giving incentives for, for developers um, to adopt more uh, lower carbon materials in the built environment. Right. Okay, great. So you mentioned bringing down the costs for the production scale and as you try to make this more into a mainstream market. One potential, it, I'm just curious to hear your thoughts on as hemp becomes more used in more applications, what that will do to your cogs of producing right now, the costs are relatively low because there's not a lot of demand, I would assume, but will demand and supply be proportional? How do you see that affecting you going forward? Yeah, we actually started Zilla Works about nine years ago. And the first four and a half years was just market analysis. We recognized one, we need to move away from extractive resources to renewable resources. And two, that there's a burgeoning market opportunity with the eventual legalization of industrial hemp in the US. And so we took the first four and a half years trying to figure out what's the highest value added product from hemp that we can produce from the highest value part of the crop. So we take the seed oil and go through a patented process to convert it to a bio epoxy resin, the kind of best performing type of plastic that we make currently. Um, and uh, we've also recognized that uh, in t- talking with farmers, we have, we've actually got farmers uh, from Alberta that have invested in Zilla Works in the previous round. Uh, they represent about 87,000 acres of, of hemp cultiv- potential hemp cultivation. So we have our near-term supply chain locked up, but of course, servicing Vestas at 100,000 metric tons of epoxy resin a year, we're going to have to you know, diversify that. So we've taught it, talked with farmers, not only in the US and Canada, but uh, globally as well. Um, and uh, as we, we've recognized that farmers need to do full crop utilization uh, to really make their money back. So we're taking the seed oil that still leaves the seed cake uh, for protein, uh, see, it leaves the bass fiber for textile industry, leaves the herd for either animal bedding or construction purposes, and of course the carbon sequestered in the soil. So we're actively co- uh, collaborating with other um, hemp processors to do full crop utilization that gives the most amount of equity back upstream to the, to the farmers. And then consequently, instead of the farmer trying to make all their money back on the so- seed oil that they're selling us, that's gonna bring our price of our seed oil down um, over time as well as that, that full crop utilization comes into play. I'll also take the opportunity to mention that our IP around our process is not limited to hemp seed oil, it's all vegetable oils. Of course, not all vegetable oils are created equal. We can use hemp seed oil, linseed oil, sunflower seed oil, rapeseed oil as good feedstocks for our patented process to create high performance bio epoxies. Oh, very cool. Very cool. What about, uh, you've got cannabis in your presentation as well. 
uh, as that becomes legalized, can you use cannabis oil as well for the epoxies you're creating? No. Different uh, type of oil uh, from like the marijuana side for CBDs or, you know, what they're using for medical or recreational, completely different uh, varieties of cannabis um, that are being used. Okay, and the oil so you can't is different use, as well. You can't use the waste from there. Okay, understood. We can potentially use the fibers uh, from that industry uh, to combine with our resin to make uh, like mass ply panels. Um, we have a, an active grant right now with Oregon State University. They're going to be looking at our resin for uh, cross laminate timber and mass ply panels. So they're specifically trying to address the waste, the fiber waste from the marijuana industry. Understood. That's, uh, prevalent in Oregon. So you took four and a half years to get here. What brought you to that point four and a half years ago of deciding you wanted to do something with hemp? And why did it then take so long to get here? Um, well, we started four and a half years ago while we were in grad school, uh, getting our MBAs in sustainable business. And um, again, we knew that there was going to be an opportunity with industrial hemp being eventually legalized. Um, and uh, we you know, just took four and a half years. We started off with a bioplastic for 3D printing. We pivoted to hempcrete for green affordable housing. You know, like many startups, you pivot and hear feedback from investors and, and talk to farmers and the marketplace and, you know, construction moves a lot slower. And we eventually landed back on, uh, on a bioplastic and got in touch with the researchers that we had uh, previously collaborated with. And it turned out that they had created this bio epoxy resin from hemp seed oil. And of course, me and my previous co-founders didn't know anything about plastics at the time. And, you know, I ended up rebuilding the entire team now around the epoxy resins and the applications of epoxies. Uh, so yeah, first four and a half years was finding our way from, through grad school and, and landing on what's going to be our, our kind of the leverage point to drive the entire industry forward uh, is creating that high value product. Understood. And you want, you want a prize from, from Vestas? That's right. We won the innovation challenge uh, through uh, Foresight Canada, a clean tech accelerator program that we're alumni of. Um, and uh, Vestas essentially was looking for folks that can help them not only reduce their carbon footprint, but deal with the end of life of their wind turbine blades. Uh, one of our patents is a, for a vitromere epoxy technology for recyclability at the end of the thermal set. Uh, and we actually have an active grant right now with Washington State University. Uh, and we, are, we just checked in with the researcher about a month ago. Uh, he was able to prove um, the formulation that we have using our hemp-based epoxy uh, with the vitromere technology, not only is outperforming the BPA or the petroleum-based epoxy uh, in the lab, but he was able to chemically separate the, the epoxy resin and recycle it as, as well as the carbon fiber in full length tack. Again, at lab scale, um, still nascent technology, uh, but a huge value add for what Vestas is doing. If it's such a value add and they're so excited, why didn't they buy the company or offer to invest? Uh, they have. We're talking to their venture arm, and they said that you know if the resin tests well, they'll come in in our Series A. Uh, we're actually scheduling a call for a check-in with them now at the end of November, beginning of December, uh, to let them know the results of our formulation. We'll be sending them a one to two kilogram sample for for testing uh, in their lab. We've also developed a relationship with NREL, the National Energy Renewable Laboratory in Golden, Colorado. They can do prototyping up to 13 meter length blades. Uh, so we're essentially our ask to Vestas is, hey, help us fund the ongoing research. Of course, wind turbines, there is you know a lot longer time to market because you have so much internal protocol testing as well as external certifications to get through. It's about a three year cycle, NREL told us to go from coupon testing to 13 meter length blades. Uh, so we've got that relationship now with NREL. We're gonna ask Vestas to fund that ongoing R&D. Uh, they're not interested in becoming an epoxy um, uh, manufacturer or supplier, um, but they'll help us scale up so that they can adopt our resin across their, their wind turbines, assuming the resin tests well. So that's the stage that we're at with Vestas.